Good morning and welcome back to my how to complete your first book video. My name is Cerise Rennie Murphy and today we are going to be talking about the basics. So we've talked about a little bit about how to start crafting your book, how to start outlining it and, and uh, thinking about your story so that when you get a chance to write, you have a clear roadmap of where you're going and why you're going there and how it's going to end that can reduce some of your anxiety and help you move forward with the actual writing of your story. We've talked about anxiety, how to push through getting stuck, but now we're going to sort of lean back for a minute and talk about the basics of the business. How, when to start marketing your book, where should you put it and why? Now, I think I'm going to take this in a couple of different videos. Uh, but so I'm going to start with the first basic question. Um, as you're writing, you may have heard that writing is only half of the battle when you're talking about publishing your book. And this is a segment for mostly self-published authors, although maybe it could be helpful to people who are thinking about going the traditional route as well. But as you're writing your book, you've heard, you know, writing is only half the battle. And that may sound crazy because you spend so much of your time thinking about these characters and thinking about how to put this story together. But the, the reality is it's true. Once you write the book, that's one wonderful phase of it. But I don't even know if it's half of what needs to happen when you publish a book. Because when you write a book and you decide you're going to share it, you want people to know about it and to read about it and to buy it and enjoy it and review it. And you want that virtuous circle or cycle to continue. Um, but so writing the book and putting it out there is not even close to enough. You need to have a strategy to help readers who you think will love this book connect with the book you've written. And for that, you usually employ a whole world of strategies called marketing. Um, how early is too early to start marketing your book? You may think, well, until I finish writing the book, I don't really have anything to say or to market. And that's not quite true. I'll tell you a little story about me and um, my first book, Order of the Seers. So I think I, I had the write it and they will come sort of strategy. So I wrote the book. I decided I was going to publish it in September, but I was really ambivalent and shy about marketing. And so I think I paid for one like email blast service. And I think I sent out one email to my friends, like the day it was released. <laughs> and then I sat in the bed and was very sad that it did not immediately become a New York times bestseller. Not that I knew what it took to become a New York times bestseller. I was just sort of throwing up a Hail Mary and then closing my eyes and hoping something would happen. It was so ridiculous. I think I sold five books that first day and felt like a complete failure, not realizing that I had not really prepared anybody to buy my book. So why would anybody know? Because there are literally, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of books that are published every single day. So, um, yes, that's not how you want to do it. Um, the short answer is you want to start marketing your book as soon as you have start writing it. You want to start telling people that you're writing it, telling them what it's about, sharing little snippets and previews of the book as you write different chapters, um, talking about your all the cool things that you're finding in your research that will help to draw the reader who would be interested in your book to your story. So I just very basic, a website. A website uh, is a great option and there are so many places that you can go uh, from WordPress sites. I use Wix.com because I'm not tech savvy at all, um, but there are so many places out there that will help you create a very simple website. Um, you know, something about you, something about your book, a place to pre-order. That's all you need. Um, and a place to post snippets, but almost every sort of online platform template website that you might go to will easily help you be able to create those things. And then anything else you want. Um, if a website seems too overwhelming for you, um, 
you might try uh, just starting on social media, maybe a Pinterest account or an Instagram account where you're posting, again, snippets from your book, cool research that you found. Um, you, I was going to say you can talk about your process, but the truth is that readers don't necessarily care about how hard it is to write your book. They just want to know that you're writing it, what you think is cool about it, share something about it, and then tell them when it's available. So um, you want to keep it, I mean, remember, you're a reader too. What would you want to know from an author? You know, you want to see previews. What does that character look like in your mind? All of that cool stuff. So you can do that on Instagram. You can do it on Facebook. But you want to start talking about your book as soon as you can so that people get prepared and get excited and you can build up momentum so when your book is actually finished, there's someone who's waiting to read it. So that's the first thing. You can pick any kind of social media platform. You can get a website. Um, once you're getting closer to publishing, you absolutely need a website. That becomes sort of non-negotiable. But as you're just starting, you may it might feel um, more accessible to you to try Instagram or Facebook or those other things. Um, the other important thing about starting a website, though, is that you can start your mailing list. A very simple, you know, sign up here for updates and things like that. That, again, creates uh, what they call permission marketing. So people, uh, your mailing list is a group of people who have said, yes, you have my permission to send me stuff about you and what you're selling or what you're doing. And that becomes the place that you sort of build your relationship and send regular updates. And those are the first people that are going to hear about your book, see the exclusive previews from your book, all those kinds of things. And you can develop a deeper relationship because these are people who have opted in to hear from you as opposed to like an ad where they just happen to see you, but, but they didn't say, Hey, I'd like to hear from you, but your mailing list does. So that's a wonderful thing that your website can do. And you can start doing that as soon as it, it's up. And I highly recommend that you do. Uh, so that's the first step. Uh, start marketing as soon as you can how to use social media. Now you might have heard that social media is not a great place to sell books. And I would say yes and no uh, with that. It is a good place to get people interested in your book. It's a great place to help people learn more about your book so that when it's out, they may be more likely to buy it. Um, I use Hootsuite uh, and I'll have all these links below to places I use. But again, they're not the only ones. Feel free to ask friends or look around. There are plenty and plenty of places that can help you. Hootsuite is a social media organizing platform. So when I go on, I can post on Facebook, my Twitter account, and my Instagram all in one go. It helps me plan my social media posts. Um, and it will, if you auto schedule, it will figure out when's the best time to post and then it will post then. So I can plan my social media posts for the entire day on Hootsuite and then go off and write and do other things. Um, and that's really helpful to me. It will also give you notices when people respond to your tweets or your, your Instagram posts so you can go back in and, you know, respond and all that good stuff. But I highly recommend it um, as a way to engage in social media but not have it be you know, a time suck because that's very easily what happens to you. So those are things that you can do. Let's talk about what format you're publishing in. Will you do Kindle or will you do paperback um, or ebook versus paperback? The great news is if you're a self-published author, you don't have to choose. You can do both and it's pretty easy to do both. Um, there are a number of platforms that you can go to to figure out to post your book as an ebook or um, produce it as a paperback. I will post some links uh, below uh, because there there are so many places and I use I use Kindle direct for my ebooks uh, through Amazon and I use draft to digital to uh, post my ebooks everywhere else. Then I use lightning source. Uh, which is associated with Ingram, which is one of the biggest uh, book distributors in the country, to publish my paperbacks. There are many, many other places. Kindle Direct, 
also is has now combined with what used to be create space so that you can do both your ebook and your uh, paperback together on one platform that's for Amazon distribution only um, but draft to digital uh, and so many other Ingram spark is the newest platform that you can use again distributed through Ingram uh, Ingram Book Group, which is one of the largest book distributors in the country, can help you produce your paperback. They also do, I think, ebooks now. Um, there are just so many places. So I'll post some links below, but you don't have to choose. Um, certainly, there are more costs associated with the paperback than a Kindle, because for Kindle, you just need to worry about Kindle formatting and a nice, pretty book cover. For a paperback, you need to look at typesetting and formatting for paperback, which is a completely different uh, situation than an ebook. Um, you're looking at printing costs, obviously, um, but there's such a thing called pr as print on demand, which is all, which is what all the services that I mentioned offer. So, what print on demand means is if someone goes and buys your book, your printer, in my case, Lightning Source, will print one would print however many books they ordered and ship them to you. I pay, say, $5 a book. If the book is on sale for $15, I get, I get whatever that profit is in the middle. I would say it's 10, but, uh, when you, when you go to distribute a book, uh, most booksellers require what's called a 55% discount rate. And that's industry standard. You don't have to do that. But if you expect your book to be sold on, say, Barnes & Noble, uh, your, your discount rate needs to be 55%. It also needs to be returnable. Um, we can talk about that more later. But bookstores generally will not order a book. They will not carry a book that they cannot buy at a 55% discount rate. And they cannot return if it does not sell. Uh, which is, a, and if that's too much of a discount for you and you just don't want to deal with that, then ebooks may be a better option for you. Um, and we'll talk about that much more in detail a little later, but those are just things to think about. Meanwhile, um, as you're having those thoughts in the back of your mind, I would just focus on where you think you'd like to put your book. Would you like to use Kindle Direct? Would you like to use Draft to Digital? Would you like to use Smashwords? There's so many different options for you, but you're not limited um, to e choosing between ebook or paperback. It's just that the formatting costs can be more for a paperback than for an ebook. But if you'd like to have both formats, you absolutely can and you should. So we're going to talk about, um, we're going to break down what are some of the costs and the logistics of. Uh, ebooks and paperbacks in our next video. We'll talk about ISBN numbers, how you get them, why you should have them, and all that good stuff. But this video is already 13 minutes. I hope I've given you a lot to think about. Check out the links below and see what looks good to you. Um, and if you have any other questions, comments, other sort of technical things that you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments section below and subscribe. And I will see you next week. Take care.